Hey guys, this last video is about quantiles. This is the last little bit of statistics that we need to do. Um, and it's the most complicated, obviously. So, so far we've used a chart and the graphics calculator to find the probabilities of percentages of data between certain values. Um, but what if we were doing the opposite? What if we knew the probability or percentage of data that we were interested in and wanted to find the values between, below or above which that percentage of data lies. So going back the other way, what values are there between which, say, 50% of the data lies or 60% of the data lies? So essentially you want to do the reverse process of what you're doing with the normal CDF function of your graphics calculator or doing with that chart on page 280. So an example of you know, doing this might be our biologist wants to protect a population of crabs by only allowing the largest 5% of crabs to be harvested. The size of crabs is normally distributed with a mean of 70 mils and standard deviation of 10 mils. Um, so what would be, um, that would be asking, so what's the, um, what's the largest crabs kept in this case if you're removing the, the the top five percent okay so you're finding the value the length of crab that would be left if the top five percent are removed um, so what if we're talking about this in um, sort of the terms of our previous learning that would be saying probability of the data being less than or equal to k or um, the un an unknown number is going to be 0 0.95. 95% of the data is less than or equal to k. Um, and what we're trying to find is what k is. What is that measurement where 95% of the data is below it and 5% is above it? So that k is known as a quantile. And we find it using the inverse normal function of the graphics calculator. So how do you access that? I'm going to keep this here so I can do an example. The inverse norm function, you press second and vars again. Second step, you select three inverse normal, press enter, and then the following appears. The area, that's where you enter the proportion or percentage that you're interested in. Um, the mu uh, symbol, that's where you enter the mean. This is where you enter the standard deviation. Paste, you select when done. So it works like normal CDF but it's doing the opposite function. So, if I was to put that in my graphics calculator, which I'll do now, um, so in this situation, I would put, um, so this is my answer to this question, inverse normal area. Well, we're given the area is 95%, 0 0.95. What the mean, um, 70 mils, and the standard deviation is 10. So I'm going to put that in, 0 0.95, 70, and 10. Press paste, press enter again. Um, and so that tells me in the answer when I pressed um, enter, it tells me what the quantile is, which is K, it's 86.45 to 2 dp. Okay, so... Anything larger, any crab larger than 86.45 mils is going to be allowed to be harvested. Anything below 86.45 is kept to protect the population. So that's how that function works um, in the graphics calculator, inverse normal. Now what you'll notice is that only works in the negative direction on these uh, Texas Instrument calculators. It tells you the quantile below which a percentage of the data is. So what's that? what that's telling you is that you have the crabs that were normally distributed with a mean of um, 70 uh, standard deviations of 10, so the next standard deviation would be 80, 90, 100, this would be 60, 50, 40. So the distribution would sort of be like um, that. Not the greatest drawing. Um, but it's just so that you understand, you get a sense of what I'm doing. And it was saying that K 
to the top 95%, uh, the bottom 95%, so around, um, sort of around uh, here, this represents 95% of the data. 95% of the crab links were allowed to harvest all of those and we're trying to work out what is K. What's the um, biggest crab that's kept or what's the smallest crab that's harvested and using inverse normal we found that that K is going to be 86.45 millimeters. So that's what K is finding. But this is only working in the negative direction, so going down there for our calculators. That's fine if you're doing something like this, when the data is less than or equal to K. That's fine. But if you're asked for K when a proportion of data is more than, um, more than uh, the number you're interested in, you need to use the inverse proportion. So um, just to give me an idea of what that means, it's... Um, is saying, what if your question was after the top 5%? This function doesn't work in that direction. Inverse normal only works in the negative direction. So to find K, when you're interested in the proportion above it, you need to be smart, you need to be tricky, you need to use the inverse proportion. So to give you an idea of what um, that means, um, if you're saying the probability of the data being less than or equal to k is 0 0.95, that means 95% of data is below k. Alright, and let's say you're asked a question, well, what's the probability of data, um, the, the probability or the percentage of data above K is 0 0.9, uh, 0 0.05. So 5% of data is above K. But you can't put that into your graphics calculator because it doesn't work in that direction. So you just need to use the inverse proportion. Um, the probability of the data being greater than K if it's 0 0.05, is going to be the same as the probability of the data being less than or equal to 0 0.95 in the other direction. Okay? Um, because, if you look at this, Um, that's the mean standard deviations. If you said the top 95%, uh, sorry, the bottom 95%, that's less than K, that's going to give you the same K as the top five percent above k all right so it's a little tricky there the only real way that you're gonna see i know the i realize that the wordings that i've used are um, a bit difficult and it's hard to do it live um, the only real way that you're gonna get the hang of this is to just do the exercises and ask for help when you um when you get stuck on the, the thinking there. The examples in the books are okay. Um, I just thought I might chuck this video up to um, sort of clear it up if it doesn't work through the examples in the book. Um, so really, the only, the only things that you should get out of this video are how you access the inverse normal function. What is it doing? It's telling you the value below which a certain percentage of the data given in the question lies. And... If in the question you're asked for, okay, what's the value going to be when a certain percentage lies of the data lies above that value, well, you just need to find the inverse proportion of that, which is going to be 100% take away whatever that um, percentage was above it, because the graphics calculator, the TI calculators only work in the negative direction. So hopefully that does help you out. Um, I'm not too... 
Um, hopeful of that because it's not the best explanation. Um, but see how you go. Um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.